Spare some drachmi. You there. You have a kind soul. Help an old man buy his next meal. You need it more than me. Here, take it. A generous gift. Thank you. What do they call you, stranger? I'm Cassandra. And you? Just a simple beggar. I sailed from Persia to see the beauty of the Greek world. I can do many things, Persian, but I can't restore sight. Nor would I want you to. My blindness is a burden that the gods have given me to carry, and I will. Then what? Be my eyes. When I was a boy, an Athenian told me the most beautiful tales of your lands. I would love to hear them again. Would you go see the places I never was able to, and return to tell me the tale of your adventures? I'm not much of a storyteller, but I will be your eyes. I knew I sensed kindness in you. You've made this old Persian happy again. Don't thank me yet. What places do you wish you could have seen? Ah, my favorite tales were always of the Acrocorinth. The statues of Zeus in Athena, the perch of the armored bird in Arcadia, and of course, the mysterious mount Taigetos. So, tell me what you know about the statue of Zeus. Its great boat stood ready to punish the Kefalonians below. Or so I was told. There are many statues to Athena. Which one do you mean? In my mind, there is only one. A story always began. As we rounded the hilltops, we could see Athens bustling below us, and Athena above, matching our gaze. The Acrocorinth? Don't tell me. It's in Corinthia. Smart guess. It is the most renowned temple to Aphrodite, your goddess of all life's most pleasurable trivialities. You did say Mount Taietos, didn't you? You sound like you know that place. I have heard tales of its appetites. They say... The mountain feeds on the suffering of Spartans, so the people there offer their own children to the mountain god for sacrifice. That's... that's not exactly right. What do you remember about this armored bird in Arcadia? There's a beast made of armor jutting out from the mountainside, overlooking Lake Stymphalos and the undulating fields stretching like waves on a golden sea all across Arcadia. I'll be back with stories to tell. As soon as you've seen one location, please return. Here we are. The famous Acropolis, a testament to humankind's skill and craftsmanship. Athenian general. Please. 
Who knew the great general was also a poet? People come here to worship Aphrodite, but the view is the real beauty. Let's hope it at least killed all of the Stymphalian birds. I'm here.
Ah, I could hear your footsteps. Welcome back. I've seen Kefalonia from the statue of Zeus. Tell me, is it still a place of great beauty? Its people are the happiest in all the Greek world. They sing and dance into the night with full bellies and full hearts. But is it how it was described to me at all? The tales go that its lands are among the world's most beautiful, and its people among the most pitiful. Okay, I've told you what I remember. Now tell me about yourself. What's a Persian doing here? Persia and the Greek world are doomed to be opposites. In times of prosperity here, Persians always seem to suffer. And when you're at war with yourselves... Persians? No peace? Indeed. My people prospered after King Xerxes was murdered. All except for me. A man tried to kill me with poison, which is how I lost my sight. I fled and arrived here. So there's a price on your head. Now I'm interested. There was, though there isn't any more. Now then, tell me another tale, and I'll tell you more of my past. You'll be glad to know I've been to the statue of Athena at the Acropolis. Ah, if only I could have been there to feel her presence. Would you describe her to me? Oh, it's even better than you can imagine. Made of pure gold. Chip one toe off her, and you'd have enough drachmi to eat for the rest of your life. Gold? No, it can be. I was always told she was bronze, and stood guard over the city of Athens, mourning the past and protecting the future. Your turn to tell me something. You said a man tried to kill you. The man who rose up to kill the tyrant Xerxes was named Darius. He was of a new creed of killers, unlike any Persia had known. He was also the man hired to kill me. A killer of kings? Hired to kill a simple blind man? Why? I have your interest, do I? Tell another tale, and I will too. I've traveled to the Acrocorinth. From there, I could see all of Corinthia. Ah, I can only wonder at what the worshippers of Aphrodite do to pay her tribute. The Atere keep the spirit of Aphrodite alive, usually well into the night. Exactly as your goddess deserves. When I was younger, I'd lie awake dreaming of what it would be like to go worship, of course. Now that's out of the way. You owe me a tale. You said the king killer Darius was hired to kill you too. He was, by my brother. Your brother? None of this is making any sense, old man. I trust you, so I will tell you. My brother and I are the last living sons of King Xerxes. Impossible! That would make you a king. I was. My name was Artaxerxes. I guided Persia through a time of peace. But my brother wanted the throne and plotted my death. Now, I hide here, exiled, living the life of a simple beggar. I will tell you more, but first... Yes, yes, a tale for a tale. I returned to Mount Taietos. Returned? Tell me, did you meet the mountain god who devours Spartan children? Your story was true. There is a snow god on Mount Taietos that lives to eat the children of Sparta. It destroys families for fun. I saw it. That was a Persian myth, and a disgusting one. I had always hoped to hear the tale of the true Taietos from someone who'd seen it firsthand. Now you tell me, King Artaxerxes. How can I believe your story? You don't exactly look like royalty. <laughs> Well, that's the point. I am hiding. Show me proof. I could. You see, I knew a man named Themistocles. The Athenian general? I heard stories about him being ostracized from Athens. 
All the petty politics. He came to Persia to me, looking for refuge. I was king, but only a boy. He spent his days learning Persian and telling me stories of his home. Places like the Acrocorinth, Mount Daigetos. The places you wished you could see. I loved the tales and loved Themistocles like a father. He was kinder to me than Xerxes ever was. Tell me one last tale, and I'll tell you why he hid his treasure. If you'd like to hear about the bird, I could describe it to you. Nothing would make me happier. It's a majestic statue, built from the blades of fallen soldiers. It's so high above Stymphalos and the golden fields below. Up there, I could forget there was a war. So it is as it was told to me. The bird commemorates Heraclius' fight against chaos, built on a place of calm. Hopefully, one draws out the best in the other. So, I've been to the five places that Mistocles told you about in his tales. For that, my soul will be eternally grateful. As for my tale, Themistocles died peacefully in Persia, as one of us. I promise him I'd see the places he told me about. His stories will live on in me. And now you. And what of your story? I let the people believe Darius succeeded in killing me, so I could escape. Artaxerxes, there's something else you should know. Yes? My grandfather was Leonidas of Sparta. That means... Your father, King Xerxes, killed my grandfather. Then you are bound by blood to avenge him. Artaxerxes, false king! This Mistyos led me right to you! Time to finish what I started! Cassandra, please! Stand behind me. Artaxerxes, are you hurt? Despite being bound by honor to avenge Leonidas, you saved me. Thank you. I had no choice. That man wanted you dead. Must have been another one of your executioners. It was. If he doesn't return to Persia, my brother will send another, then another. It's time this old man accepts his fate. You're a brave man, Artaxerxes. A trait I learned from Themistocles. Now, as for you, I owe you payment. Well, I did save your life. And I went on an adventure for you, your highness. You did? Though much of what you said is not how I remember Themistocles telling it. Things change. Ah, we approve of that, aren't we? Now, for Themistocles' treasure, find the tomb in Salamis where he made his triumphant stand against my father's navy. That's where your reward awaits. Treasure is in Salamis. I wonder what it could be. Commander, away! <laughs> Oh! 
Blessed be the god that sent you here. I'd have been eaten alive if it weren't for you. I don't think they'd eat you. But they would have certainly killed me. So thank you. I'm always happy to help someone in need. The world could do with more like you. Especially now. Pericles sent me. He was worried about you. You often get tied up and surrounded by snakes. How can you joke about this? Thugs broke into my home, dragged me here. ...tied me up and surrounded me with these hideous creatures. They must be stopped. The snakes? The thugs! Why would anyone do this? Politicians are easy targets in these troubled times. When they tied me up, they said I was a snake. That I should die by my own kind. Did you recognize the people who did this? Pericles asked me to go down to the fishing district and talk with the poor and sick. ...to give them hope. That's how I recognized their voices. Oh, yes? They threw rotten food and yelled insults at me. These thugs disguised their faces... ...but their voices and the stench of fish were unmistakable. Where should I look? I couldn't see their faces... ...but I recognized their voices from one of the districts I visited. They're regulars at Cleon's rallies. They live in the flooded part of the city, near the wall. I'll track them down, Metilhos. Don't worry. Tensions are high right now. At this rate, we'll tear each other apart within the city before the Spartans can breach the walls.
are the weapons I doubt Pericles is proud to talk about. There has to be a clue around here somewhere. Snakes? Like the ones that were meant to kill Meteochus. Someone hid the body, though I have a feeling this death was an accident. It looks like the thugs who attacked Meteochus weren't the masterminds behind this plot. This must be the house of Meteochos' attackers. But the letter proves they're just tools in someone else's plan. Whose? What the fuck are you doing sniffing around my house? You attacked Meteochos. I found the snakes, the letter from your friend, and a body. All here. Ah, oh, poor Actis. We all knew the risks. Chains don't happen without a bit of blood being spilled. You can't take the law into your own hands. Now I need to decide what to do with you. Cleon says it's time we took the city back from the elite. Time to fight. Don't matter what you do to us, there will be others who follow our lead. Why kill Meteochos with snakes? We're prisoners in our own city. Because of Pericles and his crooked friends. The snake dealer told us it's time to send a message. Time they suffered. I know someone gave you those snakes. They used you to do their dirty work. I want to know who. He's a real hero of Athens. No puppet of Pericles is going to stop him. Tell me what I want to know, or I'll cut you down right now. Your cause will be forgotten, and so will you. All right, all right. He's got a camp just outside the walls. Sells his snakes from there. It's not too late to make a difference, but we have to work together. Maybe you're right. You didn't have to show us mercy. But where do we start? Start here. This district is your home. Ignore the politicians and concentrate on where you can make change. Thank you. We will try. I need to rid uh, Athens of this snake seller. Uh, uh, uh. Ah! 
Come on. Looks like your situation's improved since we last met. The danger has passed for now. But while those monsters are out there, no one is safe. A group of fishermen tied you up. They were being used by a snake dealer working for enemies of Athens. What did you do with them? I showed them the error of their ways and sent them on their way. They won't be bothering you again. I'm glad no blood was shed. But how do you know they won't return? I made it very clear that doing anything stupid would make me angry. Well, that must have been a terrifying experience for them. Thank you for your help, Mystios. I'll be sure to mention this to Pericles. <gasps> That's everything Pericles wanted. Time to return to him and find out what these Athenians know about my mother. We'll be watching you, Mystios. Ah, at least give them a welcome first. Fine. Pericles welcomes you to his symposium. Sandra, it's you! Phoebe! You promised we'd see each other again, and now we have! I also said, stay out of trouble. Which I have! Okay, almost out of trouble. How did you even get here, Phoebe? Well, I did make some draft me working for Marcos. So you paid someone to bring you to Athens? Not exactly. Phoebe. I needed a drachmi for when I arrived. I couldn't use it all to leave, and I didn't want to wait any longer. So I sneaked on a ship. Don't worry, nobody saw. I just can't believe you made it. I don't remember much of Athens from when I was a baby. But every once in a while, something feels familiar. It's nice. I can't believe you're here. <laughs> Me either. I can't believe we both made it to Athens. It's so much different from Kefalonia. But what are you doing here? I'm here to get you ready. I have to make sure you leave all your weapons and change into these clothes. So you somehow work here? For Pericles? No, for Aspasia. How is it you're working for Aspasia? Well, I did get into a little bit of trouble after I got to Athens. I may have been a leader of a small group of orphans that tried to cheat Aspasia. We didn't know it was her, though. And you convinced her to hire you? No. She asked me on her own. That was lucky. I don't understand why I have to change. It's just what you do here. I felt weird at first, but you forget about it pretty fast. And my weapons? Don't worry. I'll take care of them. You don't want to scare people in there. Well... I think I'm ready to go in. You can't! Not like that, anyway. The Athenians like it best when you try to fit in. But don't worry, I have just the outfit for you. I'll get changed. Promise you'll take care of my things? Yep. Leave your weapons in the corner, and I'll come back when you're done. I feel uncomfortable in this. Now you look like everyone else. You say that like it's a good thing. It is. If you want them to take you seriously, this is the easiest way. Trust me. Is that everything? You're all ready to go in. Don't worry. You've done scarier things than this. I'm struggling to think of any right now. Are you sure I can't keep just one weapon with me? No weapons. Now hurry and go in. Oh, and don't leave without saying bye.
Here, Cassandra. The mighty mercenary and traveler has finally made her grand entrance. Only slightly late, too. Herodotus! Athenians have no problem letting me know when I'm not welcome. It's a relief to see your friendly face. Don't let the company here tonight intimidate you. I won't. Pericles is no king. He needs these guests to love him so that the people love him. And they, in turn, need Pericles. You're not different from any of them. Do you really think these people will help me? They will if you get them to trust you. And you've wisely dressed for the occasion. Appearing trustworthy is the most important part of being trusted, after all. Now then, come, let me introduce you to everyone. They may not look it, but this group holds the way to the future on the tip of their opinionated tongues. Ah, Sophocles and Everybidis, for example. Two of the most celebrated playwrights to date. No one can throw stones as far as they can. They appear to be locked in some kind of intellectual struggle, as is their way. He's a writer of comedies, of all things. Comedies, every pedis. <laughs> I've heard of Sophocles. In my line of work, it pays to know who the richest and most famous men are. Hermippos has also written his fair share of comedies. You should drink more. Lately, his attitudes have garnered him more notice than his works. However, the fellow beside him, Protagoras, is a sophist worthy of as much praise as the great Socrates himself. Inviting Socrates seems like a good way to ruin everyone's night. I'm surprised they would let him in the door. Oh, don't let Socrates get under your skin. At least he wore shoes for the occasion. And the poor thing gesticulating like an ape is Thrasymachus. If you listen closely, you'll notice he and Socrates are actually arguing the same points. But the wind from his wild gestures deafens him to critique. That isn't at all what I mean. Where is Pericles? Oh, he never attends his own parties. Which reminds me, there's something I need to get his help with. Vile Socrates, always appearing where I least expect him. Warrior, protect me from his amorous gaze. Oh, Alcibiades, this is not a time for jealousy, but for love. Let's not use Alcibiades as an example. Be good and don't drink too much. So, tell me, what does a Mystios like you think of a party like this? This party could be fun. Alcibiades drinks like a Spartan. Maybe he fights like one too. If I could suggest anything, please don't start a fight or end one. Thank you, Herodotus. Now, if you'll excuse me, Pericles is here somewhere, and I need to prepare him. If he's alone, I'll tell him what your brother said. Agreed. Pericles needs to know. I'll stay here and look for clues. I hope they know something about your mother. Me too. I suppose you've come in here to mock me for my fight with every pedis. Spare me. I'm only looking for clues to help me find a Spartan woman. Mm, a Spartan woman in Athens. Sounds intriguing. 
Though, if you expect me to notice someone other than myself, you expect too much. You could talk to every Pidis. He's the second most worldly man here. That ridiculous Xanthodontus exothalmic Morosov. But he doesn't talk without a drink. I have no idea what that meant. No, you don't. You want to get every Pidis drunk? Are you hoping he's gonna make an even bigger scene than you did? Ha! We both know that's not possible. But you're a feisty one, to say the least. All right. If nothing else, this party could use the help. You'll need to pick the right wine for this task. The kitchen should have what you need. Let me know when every Pidis is done in, and I'll slip away unseen. How do you know Pericles? I believe you mean to ask me, how does Pericles know you? I'm the greatest dramatist in the land, mentor to every Pidis, lover of Asclepios, father of theater, and so on and so on. I'm sure it's a real honor to have you hiding in his kitchen. You're awfully worked up over every Pidis. You sure you're just friends? I'm never just anything, foreigner. Though I confess, every Pidis and I hold a bond deeper than brotherhood. Why he slams it with a banal young plaything, Aristophanes, I will never know. I'll get the one. Wonderful. Now, if you want some friendly advice, Aristophanes cannot stand sweet wine. I've seen what it can do to him. Absolutely, horrifyingly delightful. It wouldn't be a party without someone losing their stomach. I'll let you know if your plan worked. Save for that arrogant playwright. I don't see many distinguished guests in here. Can I help you with something? I'm here for your sweet wine. Yes, take it. But get out of my kitchen. I'm very busy, you know. Yes, you come and talk to me. A new face in Pericles' abode. Ha! That in itself is a remarkable thing. You must have seen me doing my impression of Cleon. I call it the Orange Ape. Tell me, what does it think? I am called many things. It isn't one of them. What do you call yourself then? Creature of many names? Cassandra. Hmm, I wouldn't peg you as a Cassandra, but never mind. I'm Aristophanes, and this man is every Pidis. Oh, go on, introduce yourself. I'm every Pidis. For a playwright, you're not much for words. Good men lead quiet lives, as old every Pidis likes to say. Don't you, every Pidis? When I need to relax, I start a fight. For you, though. Quickly! Bring him some wine so that he might say something clever. After my argument with Sophocles, I think I'd rather keep my head clear. You and Aristophanes could both use a drink. Let's play a game. A competition? Ah, wonderful idea! Every pity seems quiet, but he never turns down a challenge. Well, if you brought us some wine, I wouldn't be opposed to showing this young one how we are gives drink. Pericles has invited all of you here for some reason. Either we dine here and praise Pericles, or we dine with Cleon. But Cleon has all the charm of a typical politician. A horrible voice, bad breathing, and vulgar manners. Let's conjure Dionysus, shall we? This... this is pure swill. Amateur. In my day, this would be considered nectar of the gods. Another round! Ready for more? Yeah, I can hardly stomach this pig's piece. I could outdrink both of you with one hand. 
Let's have some more. You ready for another? This wine is terrible. You, I like you. <laughs> Who brought you here? I brought myself. I'm on the trail of a woman who fled Sparta a long time ago. Fled? Why? She lost two children. She had no choice. She fled to heal a broken heart. Every Pidis, write her into a play. I've heard Spartan mothers go to a sanctuary in Argolis to beg Asclepios for his divine pity. I should know it's my home. After what she went through, I'm not sure she'd trust priests. Oh, then she sought my friend, Hippocrates. He's a physician, best of the best. He still keeps his office in Argos. If she went to him for help, there's no doubt he'd have given it. I love getting drunk and singing. Come back if you want to sing with me. I'll think about it. Perhaps later. In First, explain to me your point. Here I come. <laughs> How's every Pidis? Drunk, I hope. You can stop hiding in here. Every Pidis won't notice you coming out. He won't notice anything. Hiding? Heed this. War has come to Athens. First they take our homes, then they take our heads. I intend to be found with at least my dignity intact. Or what's left of it anyway. If you see Pericles, tell him I said thank you for another colorful evening. Someone's being hurt. Open this door or I'll kick it in! Oh, 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 oh don't mind her. She likes to watch. Mm. Look at you. Such authority. Such aggression. I can see why Pericles has taken such an interest in you. Did you come to join us? It sounded like someone was in pain. Well, it can sometimes be hard to distinguish between sounds of pleasure and pain. Had I known you were going to knock, I would have left my door wide, wide open for you. I only came to this symposium to find someone. Sounds like we can help each other then, doesn't it? You fetch us a bit of oil, I help you find who you're looking for. Maybe they're in here. She's not in there. I think I'll check all the same. After your display earlier, it's probably safer I get the oil. Obedient, too. I knew I liked you. Don't take too long. If you don't get the oil soon, all our fun.
just can't stay away, can you? Did you bring the oil? I come bearing gifts. <gasps> We're saved! Today, these women grieved for their sons. And these men worked the wall. But tonight, we forget all of that. Let's have some fun! What do you say? Care to join us? Time for some fun. You'll have to help me strip off these uncomfortable Athenian robes. Gladly. If you like, we can feed them to the goat. There's another goat? <laughs> <laughs> now, it's time for you to help me, Ali. I'm looking for someone. All business right until the end. I like that. Focus. I'm looking for a woman who fled Sparta a long, long time ago. Fled Sparta? No one flees Sparta. But let's pretend she did. If she were stupid, she'd be dead. If she were smart, she'd do what Aspasia did. She'd earn her independence. The smartest and most resourceful women I've ever met. The Athera? I've heard they play some sort of role in Corinth, but I assumed it was the same as any other city. Oh, no. These women are unlike any other you'll meet. A force, and the only ones there with any smarts. Ali! Come back inside! Ooh, the celebration continues. When you reach Corinth, find Anthusa. No one goes in or out of the city without her knowing. Until we meet again, warrior. Anthusa in Corinth. It's not much, but it's a start.